Well, hello and welcome to Tel Aviv, but we're not at the expo as we normally are. We are here on the Eurovision cruise. Uh, as you can see, we got our fans with us as well. We got Ross and I didn't catch your name. Simon. Simon, we got Simon as well, and we'll talk to them in just a moment. But we are here on Eurovision cruise part two. We were actually here on Tuesday as well, uh, as as the first one was so good, unlimited drinks and all that. There'll be a few consumed later on. I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna not lie. Let's be honest. Uh, you're with, we're with Jerry as well. Well, we're, you're on ESC Plus. Uh, we, of course, doing a bit of a quick preview ahead of tonight. We've got many hours yet until the show starts, but it goes very quick time. We all know what it's like when we grow up. But, uh, Joey, how are you feeling? Because it is the final day. I feel a bit upset thinking like it's nearly over, but we're yeah, not going to Yeah, I mean, it's almost over, but it'll be exciting to know the winner. And I'm looking forward to getting home to see my husband and the dogs. And um, I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know, getting away from you. So, <laughs> so there are some good things to the to this uh, fortnight coming to an end. And I was thinking opposite. I, I didn't want to get away from you at all. You know, uh, I mean, I uh, can't believe you. Can't believe you do. I can't believe you. Uh, but anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, so, of course, we you did post something on the ESC Plus website. Yeah. Before. So I mean, like, so basically, we know going into tonight, it's the same as what it's been for the past couple of months, in that the Netherlands are the favorite to win, and we see the odds going up, up close to 50% of a uh, chance of winning. So really what I'm trying to do to keep my mind really interested in the, in the idea of uncertainty is uh, just because they're the favorite and they are by far the favorite, is it still the most likely outcome from this? Because we do have, a, we have assigned some probability to the, um, the remaining 25 countries. And um, I know from studying election polls and you know, doing a lot of mathematical analysis that there is always a chance for polling error. There is a chance for uh, data to be you know, misinformed and for things to change. We're trying to predict human behavior, which you are a testament to how hard that is to do. So um, you know, let's talk about some scenarios where we end up tonight with a non-Netherlands winner. I think that's the most interesting yeah. um, place to dive in right now. Yeah, I, I, it's funny because I watched, I was at the jury final last night and so were you, we were in the same area, the Golden Circle, where, you know, we can see it up close of what's going on stage and wise, and it's really interesting what kind of insights you get. And I watched the Netherlands song thinking, love it, you know, you, you nailed it, Duncan, just keep doing it on Saturday and you, you might win. Uh, you, you got, well, big chance of winning. But then when Australia came up being second to last yeah. on the running order, and when I just saw her being rolled in on the pole and everything, I was thinking, this is ridiculously good. Yeah. Like, if you're in the arena, you are in for a treat. But even if you watch on TV, you will straight away think, what the hell have I just seen? Oh, thank you very much, Ross, our good friend from oh, Malaysia. Thank you, Ross. Uh, how are you, Ross? Uh, good man. We will talk Cheers. to him in just a moment. Enjoy. Enjoy. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. And uh, it's funny because I watched that performance of Australia and thought, you know what? I can see people voting for Australia after they see that performance instead. Even if they're convinced Netherlands are going to win, that might yeah, change I mean, their mind. And the thing is about the televote that um, we have to maybe reinforce when we're looking at predictions is that people can vote for multiple countries. So, um, you know, it's, it's different than going to a ballot box and picking a candidate. So it's difficult to measure how, how things are going to work out. I mean, there is a theory that, you know, you've got these complementary songs in one way, right? Yeah. Like, so there is the Malta, Switzerland, and Cyprus that have all been compared to one another. What if fans of that type of music turn up more tonight because of the three of them and they all vote for each other? Like, there's all kinds of schematics of stuff that could happen. Maybe not so likely, but it could happen, and that's why we're going to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. So come on then, what, what, what's your... So, with this, with this, uh, scenario? so here's my list of scenarios, um, and I think maybe this is in uh, how likely they are in my mind. So the first one would be Australia soars high, and this would be, you know, Kate doing okay with the jury. You know, basically we'd run through the jury votes, and Netherlands is still out top, and then it'll get interesting when we get to the televote. Um, and the thinking behind this is, again, 25th in the running order, looking very, very good on television, uh, creating an enormous amount of buzz. What if we are underestimating or overestimating the attention span of the viewers at home and they really remember that 25th performance and they've forgotten about Duncan who went 12th and 
there's just enough there that she can catch him with a televote. That is a scenario that I see potentially happening. Um, and we'll just have to wait and see, but that is that is one. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, it's what I've had in my mind as well, a little bit, when I woke up this morning thinking the scenarios that could happen, and that was up there. All it right. was up there. Um, so the next one I have after that is, is John from Sweden, and I, I say, like, keep an eye on this, because I was really, really surprised last year when Benjamin kept on getting 12 points from the jury over and over. Um, there is this love for Sweden within the jury community, I think. And this, again, is a really polished number and someone who's really beloved in terms of his songwriting. He's got that politician about him in the sense that he's made great relationships. He may have a lot of jury favor. And if he can hang tight with um, Duncan in the jury vote, he may be able to squeak it out in the televote because it's Sweden. And this, and, is, and this is no doubt better than Benjamin and Grosso's song. You know, it's more memorable as well. And yeah. so, as you say, it could just do a few better and win the win the whole thing. Yeah, so I mean, I think more so than who is in first and in second, I'm going to be looking for the margin. I mean, a lot of times they talk about elections in the US and they say, you know, elections are won on the margins. It's like places where you know one person's going to outperform another, but the question is by how much. Yeah. So I'll be looking for how far of a lead can the Netherlands build with the jury vote and can someone overtake them in the televote? Absolutely. All right, so my third scenario would be around Italy and um, maybe invigorating some of those non-voters out there in the audience because we've heard for months now how Soldi has been the most popular Spotify track in the whole of 2019 Eurovision. I mean, these people have to be somewhere. And even when you account for Italy uh, streams and discount for that, it's still by far and away the be most successful track. So if Mamu can tap into a type of... Thank you. Thank you. Your, your television professionalism is just on point. Um, you know, if Mamu can tap into some of these viewers that maybe haven't voted before, there may be a whole resource out there that we that we haven't been accounting for yet. Maybe they, people who haven't voted in Eurovision or watched Eurovision, for that matter. There's too many Spotify streams out there for me to believe that they've all been voting in Eurovision all along, and we know what they're going to do tonight. It's funny because Italy, two years ago, when we had um, Otidis Karma, I can't pronounce how do you say it? O o Otidis Karma. That's it, yeah. That song had, uh, on his official YouTube channel, before the contest even began, had over 100 million viewers. Right. Um, you know, as you say, despite the streams and all that, it didn't win. And, right. it, it's, it's, and you'd think, you know, ahead of a song contest, you'd think, right, that's the favorite, it's gotta be, just because of the interaction it's got around the world, but the votes weren't there that night. Right. So. It's, it's a scenario, I'm not saying it's likely. <laughs> uh, so the next one I have on my list is, uh, can France come up and surprise people? And the reason I put this out there is because if anyone watched Destination Eurovision, Bilal was kind of dead in the water after the jury votes were revealed. And we waited for the televotes thinking there was no way it was gonna happen. And then he pulled out numbers that were completely unfathomable from that televote. And this goes around a lot along the lines of fans connecting to the message, but also Bilal is a social media connoisseur. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, if he motivates the fans that he already has and then capitalizes on this message and connects with people who don't know who he is yeah. through the story and the staging, maybe that, maybe there's a televote number there that's, that's you know, has not been seen before. Inter that's interesting. That is interesting. I mean, it's. Actually, our boat, I think, is about to leave, so uh, we'll actually get quite a nice view of the background in just a bit of the sea, but I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly think, with the scenarios tonight, I think we've got... Here's my country that I think could win. Well, I'm not done with my list yet. You can go into yours. Yeah, okay, uh, go on, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, you, can, you don't even pay attention to the rhythm of... <laughs> we've, I've got two more. Love, love, so, peace. Switzerland. Um, I'm thinking there's a Justice for Fuego campaign out there in Europe somewhere. And with Switzerland, with its great position in the running order and the little momentum that Luca has experienced in the past few rehearsals, uh, you know, maybe there could be a surprise in there where... Um, I remember Frego last year was 25th, 26th in the running order. You're right, it was 25th. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's that, and then finally, this is the most outlandish of my scenarios, but like any good person planning for catastrophes, 
I need to think about it. So what if there's some kind of like motivated group out there in the world that can maybe tweak the voter? Like a cult. <laughs> yeah, or like just someone who's really good at hacking. Like maybe they can get in and like throw votes towards a certain country's uh, way. Like I could see maybe passionate Atari fans figuring out a way to bring down capitalism. Oh. And one way they do that is by skewing the televotes enough in Hatari's favor without making it look like an absolute like fraud. I mean, is also a chance we'll get hit by a meteor tonight too, but <laughs> in my, uh, you know, sort of science fiction mode, this is something that could happen. I think, you know, I watched Atari last night, and it's... I mean, they're going to get a good result yeah, yeah, on it on its, on Sorry, anyway. Um, so maybe, is there something out there in the universe that could top, tip it more in their favor? I think, I think, I honestly think with Atari, where I wouldn't be surprised, I'll say this now, I wouldn't be surprised if it finished second, like the other Icelandic acts from 10 years ago and then 20 years ago. And, and it'll be, I mean, for Iceland, it'll be annoying, because you'd think, third time lucky, we could do it. But it's just, I, I don't think he'll win, but I think Atari will get a top five result for me. And the, the, the staging, if you if you do watch it tonight and you haven't seen it yet, it is, I think it's breathtaking. It's different, it's not it's not what you get at Eurovision every year. And the character of the lead singer, he's so in character. The moment the song even finishes, he's just walking away, doesn't say thank you, and he's still in character when he's in the green room. And I think that should be noted because he's, you know, he is he is there to do his job. He's not just thinking about himself. He's thinking about right. I want to actually keep it realistic. So yeah, I'm I'm loving Iceland this year, and it'll be a song. Whatever happens tonight, don't know about you, Joey, but it, it is a song tonight where I will listen to it for years to come. Yeah, I'm really thrilled to see it at Eurovision. Yeah, I'm thrilled that there's a band like them bringing this genre to the stage and making even even from my own selfish awareness of them, I have discovered a band that I'm going to follow now. For, for some time and uh, you know not every Eurovision act inspires that in me so I'm really glad that uh, I'm, I'm at Glastonbury next month I'll have to uh, try and invite them to that if I can well they are they already are on the on airwaves which is a big big music festival in Reykjavik in November so I think they're gonna be around and and be have their big fan following for years to come who knows, maybe we'll see them back one day. One day. As you can see, the boat is now moving. Uh, fantastic views here in Tel Aviv. Uh, Joey, you've got one more scenario, haven't you? Yeah, the, scenario, the last scenario is uh, you get so drunk on this cruise that you're, you're murmuring the whole evening and you're passed out onto the, the I don't know, the news table tonight? <laughs> How's that for a scenario? Wow, well, I can that see that happening. Oh, hello. Hello. Hey, hey. A boat just coming past us there, fellow boat. Looks exactly the same, actually. A carbon copy of what we're on. Um, okay, so we'll be back tonight, Danny. We'll be back tonight. We're going to get some thoughts from the fans in a separate video. Stay tuned.